So Einstein, in his great 1905 year, took this idea of Planck of E is equal to some constant times the frequency and applied it to the photoelectric effect as we've talked about earlier. Summary of that was as you increase the frequency of the light you're gonna need more and more stopping potential in order to stop all the electrons. Now we can of course multiply by a constant E and change this to energy instead so we get kind we basically get this so looking at that then Einstein basically said it's not the oscillator that has energy level that's quantized it's the electromagnetic energy that is quantized that every time the electron absorbs the energy it takes it by one chunk worth and this chunk is worth e sorry h times nu just like how the smallest amount of charge you can pick up is an electron's worth the smallest amount of light you can absorb is h times nu and it depends on its frequency that's the brilliant idea that Einstein have and that starts the whole idea that hey light is actually a particle now I want to stress here at this point that when you have light as a particle it doesn't mean that light travel as like a ball of fire Hadouken. no it's one photon worth of light looks like this as it propagates and two photons worth of light looks like this it's just that we can't possibly have one and a half photons worth of light so that's not allowed that's what we mean by quantization of light energy and it is this idea contrary to popular belief and not relatively that got him the Nobel Prize and rightfully so it's not because relatively wasn't popular or anything it's that this is quite revolutionary and basically started the whole wave particle duality of different things ultimately leading to quantum mechanics it's an important discovery so while Einstein uses e equal change nu to quantize the electromagnetic wave uh, on the electron side things have advanced a little bit as well in 1911 Rutherford uh, discovers that there's a nucleus and so subsequently in 1913 Niels Bohr came up with his um, kind of model atomic model of a dense nucleus with electrons zipping around on the outside kind of orbit model there are certain things that doesn't work with that and we'll go through that in a little bit similar to how Planck was initially proposing that the electron energy level is also quantized there are has been clues to how this energy level is quantized um, comes in the form of gas emission spectrum uh, when you heat up gas and only one type of gas and emit some light and when you put it through a prism or whatever you separate it into all kinds of rainbow you find these discrete lines so say for hydrogen very simple atom has a few lines iron has a lot more lines but nonetheless you get these discrete lines that knowing of course now these and these different frequency corresponds to different amounts of energy e equals h nu that tells you that an atom can only give up specific amounts of energy they can't give up anything they want it has to jump from one level to another this that's kind of discrete but to kind of really see it for the first time is through the Frank Hertz experiment another classic experiment Frank Hertz they're two different people they're not um, these experimentalists often work in pairs and it seems like they don't have first name but no it's Frank and Hertz so how their experiment goes is actually quite similar to your 
photoelectric effect experiment. So what they have is they have like an electron gun over here with some kind of accelerating voltage. And then it's, they have some stop and put some plate that provides a stopping potential once again. Now this electron gun is going to fire some electron and it's going to try and come up against, oops, wrong sign, some negative charge to see if it makes it to the end to give you the current. What's different is this thing instead of a vacuum is now filled with Hg plus. And what can happen is all these Hg particles, as the electron bounces, moves across and collides with our H2, with our mercury particles, chances are they're going to lose some energy if the atom can take them. Um, knowing classical mechanics, atom is much heavier, so we know through that calculation, conservation momentum, conservation energy, we can know how much energy it loses per co collision. And so for a given accelerating voltage, you expect that current coming out, the number of electrons that mix it to the end, will get higher as your accelerating voltage gets higher. So the faster the electron initially flies off, the more mercury it can hit before it slows down enough that it doesn't make it through the plate. But what you actually see is that you get you rise up as you get speed up, but at some point you get a big jump, big drop, and then it rises up again, and then you get another big drop, and then you rise up again, you get another big drop. So why is there that pattern? What it ends up happening is because the electron energy level is quantized, if you're too slow, the mercury can't take your energy because it can't you're not providing enough energy for it to jump up to the next level, so it bounces off elastically. And then when you get fast enough right here to have enough energy to give the energy to the mercury, that's when you start inelastically colliding. You lose a bunch of energy and so you don't make it to the end. And then you have to build up again and then at twice that energy you can collide twice and still survive. And then three times and so forth. We're still, notice we're not working with different energy level, we're still working with just the first energy level, but multiple collision. But the importance of this experiment here is that we now we can now say that the electron energy level is also quantized, something Bohr has already worked into his uh, atomic model in, in a fairly ad hoc va fashion, and we'll, we'll do that because it's actually surprisingly effective.